welcome to maths tutorial this is tutorial number 1 vector calculus and we are at question number 3 in this question we are supposed to find the value of a b and c the directional derivative of the function phi ax y square plus b y z the c z square x cube at the given point 1 2 minus 1 has the maximum magnitude of 64 in the direction parallel to z axis so we'll start with finding out the directional derivative of phi which is given as nabla dot phi or del phi by del x in i direction plus del phi by del y in j direction plus del phi by del z in k direction now i'll be differentiating the function phi with respect to x y and z respectively so when i differentiate the function with respect to x the middle term does not have any of the x components so it will become constant and hence becomes zero on differentiating the first term will give me a y square and the third term will give me 3 c z square x square this will be the component of i similarly when i differentiate with respect to y the third component will become zero and it will give me 2 axy plus bz of j and when i differentiate with respect to z the first term will become zero and i'll get by plus 2 cz x cube k now i need to find out the value of this directional derivative at point 1 to minus 1 So I'll be substituting the value of x equal to one, y equal to two, and z equal to minus one in the above directional derivative, so as to get a times two square plus three c minus one square into one i plus two a one two. Plus b times minus one j plus b times two plus two c minus one into one q k. Now, if I substitute these values and solve it up, I'll get four a minus three c i. Plus four a minus b j plus two b minus two c k. Now obtain the directional derivative at the given point. Now the question says that it has a maximum magnitude of sixty four in the directional direction parallel to z axis. So the direction parallel to z axis basically means the value of del phi by del x will be equal to zero. the value of del phi by del y will be equal to 0 and the value of del phi by del z that is in the z direction is maximum and that is equal to 64 so from here i'll get three equation the first equation says that 4a minus 3c is equal to 0 the second equation says that 4a minus b equal to 0 and the third equation says that 2a minus 2c is equal to 64 now first of all i'll take the simplest equation this one which will give me 4a equals to b now i'll substitute the value of b over here sorry a over here to get equation 2 times 4a minus 2c is equals to 64 or 8a minus 2c is equals to 64 i can also change the first equation by multiplying it By two on both the sides, which will give me eight a minus six c is equals to zero. But this should be equal to plus over here. So I'll just I'll be just correcting it because minus one square is plus. So I'll get plus six c over. Here. Let's say this is my equation number one. And this is equation number two. I'll subtract equation one and equation two to get six c minus two c. That is 
eight C equals to minus sixty four, or from here I'll get the value of C is equals to minus eight. Now I can substitute this in equation number one to find out the value of A. So this gives me eight A equals to minus six C, or A is equals to minus six C by eight, which will become equal to six. Similarly, I can also calculate the value of B, which is equal to four times A, or twenty-four. So I have the value of A, B, and C now. The value of A is six, B is twenty-four, and C is minus eight. Let's move on to the next question, question number four. In question number four, we are supposed to determine the constant b such that the given function a is solenoidal. Now, over here, we need to solve this question in a very simplest manner by understanding what is a solenoidal function. So, a solenoidal function is one whose directional derivative is going to be equal to zero. So. If I substitute the directional derivative of this function equal to zero, I can obtain the value of c. So let's try to do that. First of all, I'll divide this entire function into three part. Let's say this is my a one, this is my a two, and this is my a three. So instead of finding out the uh, the directional derivative, uh, so it's uh, over here. What I'll be doing is first of all I'll be differentiating these three parts. With respect to x, y, and z respectively. So when I uh, differentiate the first part, I'll get b, and I differentiate the second part with respect to y. This whole term consists of x and z, which becomes constant, so zero, and I'll be only left with minus three. Similarly, if I calculate del d l a uh, del a three by del z with respect to z, since there is no z term over here, this will become zero. Now, since a is solenoidal, since the function a is solenoidal, we should understand that the directional derivative of a is going to be equal to zero. Or, if I add these three terms, del a one by del x, del a two by del y, and del a three by del z, if I add them up, I am going to get A sum which is equal to zero. So from here, I can simply calculate the value of b to be equal to three. A pretty simple question. Now let's try to complete the last question of the tutorial. Question number five. Here I need to calculate the curl of curl of a, where the vector a is given as x square y of i minus two x z z plus two y z k at the given point. So first of all, we'll try to understand what is curl of a. So the curl of a is basically the cross product of directional derivative with the vector a, which is further given as i j k del by del x del by del y del by del z, and I'll be having three components over here: x square y minus two x z two y z. Now let's try to solve this determinant. So I'll be having i component multiplied by del by del y of two y z minus del by del z of minus two x z minus j component of del by del x of two y z minus del by del z. Of x square y plus k times del by del x minus two x z minus del by del y of x square y. Now let's try to solve this equation. So I'll get i times when we differentiate with respect to y, we'll get two z, and when we'll differentiate with respect to z, we'll get plus two x. Similarly, over here I'll get minus j times 
two y z when differentiated with respect to x will become zero, and x square y when differentiated with respect to z will become zero. Similarly, for z, I'll get minus z minus two z minus x square. Right. So this is the equation I'll be getting. Now, I need to find out the curl of this equation as well. On simplifying, I can write it down as two x plus two z i minus zero j. Or plus zero j plus plus minus x square minus two z k. So I need to find out the curl of this curl again. So I'll be using nebula cross nebula of a. That basically means I again need to find out a determinant in which the function or the component of the function that will be used will be the result of the previous equation. So let's try to do that. I'll get i j K, del by del x, del by del y, del by del z. The third term will be equal to two x plus two z, zero, and minus x square two z. Let's try to solve this uh, determinant over here. So I get i times del by del y of minus x square two z. Minus del by del z of zero minus j times del by del x of minus x square minus two z minus del by del z two x plus two z plus k times. Del by del x of zero minus del by del y of two x plus two z. Let's solve this equation quickly so that I'll get i times this entire term will become zero since it does not have any of the component and this is already zero so I'll get zero i simply a zero i. The second term, when I differentiate with respect to x, will give me minus two x, and this, when differentiated with with respect to z, will give me minus two, and the third term also becomes zero. So I'll get plus zero k. Now, at the given point, that is, at one zero two, when I substitute this value. I'll have the curl of curl of a equal to minus j times minus two minus two or four j, which becomes your final answer. So that's all about tutorial number one. For more videos, stay tuned. Thank you so much.